Hi, I'm Andrew Overton, and welcome to the back office teardown lab. We are continuing with our GameCube mod while my shell is drying in the back. And uh, I'm going to look at today the Xeno mod, which is this teeny tiny little thing. And this uh, apparently fits somewhere within the CD drive. We're going to figure that out. And it will allow this Japanese GameCube to play foreign titles, which is UK titles in my case, and I have a load of those. Um, apparently, this allows it to read, I think, copied discs or some specific disc, and you've got to adjust the laser. There's a whole instruction on this. And it came with this DVR, so it can run the DVRs, and this has something on it called Swiss, and then that's like a Swiss Army knife tool, and apparently that lets you uh, boot from uh, different regions. And also, there's this candy little thing, which apparently fits in the little serial port at the bottom, and lets you put in a micro SD card. So I presume it's going to be reading that, say it's chip select on there, clock ground DID on. So it's probably going to just read that as a one bit spy. Um, bus to get data in and off uh, out of that but I think you always need the CD and you definitely need the mod chip so I guess you're not reading any non Nintendo approved CDs until you get that in there so I'm gonna take it apart I had a look I originally thought that this went on the uh, main board somewhere but I couldn't find this <laughs> this bit of circuit anywhere so I have to assume it's on the drive which makes a lot more sense really so I've not followed, um, well followed, I've not read the uh, instructions fully on this, so we're kind of just figuring it out as we go along. Um, but part of the uh, process, again, is this weird laser calibration. So I think if you're going to do this, you probably ought to make sure you have a multimeter so that you can read off the value that the laser's set to, that's going to be a, a resistor. So at least you've got some idea of where you started. Um, and what uh, you might want to do as well is kind of assemble your GameCube and all of the parts. You can test it without having to have it installed in its case. Because look at all this. There's a lot of screws and fiddling around here just to get to that uh, adjustment, I should think. In fact, I haven't even seen the laser adjustment. Ah, it could be this. It could be this. So let's uh, have a little zoom in and hopefully I'm not destroying anything here. So you can see there clearly an adjuster. I suspect that's the uh, laser adjuster, so we'll probably figure out how to measure the value of that at some point. But this is the area, because it looks the same as this. Let's just see, um, or does it? <laughs> it's definitely the right thing. Um, I'm not quite sure, oh yeah, it does say 10, 6, 1, 5. So 10, 6, 1, 5, so yeah, that's the white ray wound. And they're showing the Zinu mod in this orientation, aren't they? So the idea is, it seems, that it should be able to sit on there. Um, yes, yeah, so you can see on the bottom, uh, I'm going to have to zoom in. <laughs> We're going to have to zoom in. You can see just the very edge here of some vias. So they'd fit some through-hole vias here and then drilled it out afterwards. So that's why you've got these. And then you see, if I turn it slightly, you can see the metal edge of this wire, but there's no pad, unlike the top where there is pad. So technically, if you can fit this properly, it shouldn't short out. So that's why it's like that. And it looks like they've got cutaways and things, so it doesn't foul with surface mount. So it's definitely designed to be fitted in place. I have seen people installing this on wires, though, generally. Um, maybe because it's uh, easier to do if you're going to cock something up. Also, look at this. That looks suspiciously like a bodge, like maybe there's a factory fit bodge in here. Hmm, okay. So we have a number of connections to make, and there you can see power, CB, DRAD. So there's six of those. So I've got my soldering iron on and warming up. I'm just seeing how this is going to happen here. So <laughs> I'll keep the diagram off the screen. I'm going to center it here. In fact, let me make sure I can definitely see that diagram. And we're going to have one, two there, definitely. One, two, three, four, 
five. I'm trying to see the five and the six here. Oh, I see that test point here. The little test point. So if you align it to these test points, I suspect you'll do all right. So let's just go for it. So I've got the old soldering iron out. Now I wonder if we should uh, be tinning, tinning these things and putting some flux in. I'm going to try and try without and see what happens. Ah, <laughs> so the board definitely likes to wander. So I'm going to hold it. I'm going to actually use the camera because the camera is a little bit more vertical so I can actually see better with it. I'm trying to align it up in a way that will reduce. I think that is best because we want to make sure that it's going to maximize the uh, our ability to solder onto those other pads in there without shorting them and that in there is the one that looks the most suspicious okay so we're going to apply some solder again there we go so the trick there was to get the tip of the soldering iron into touching that test point without touching the blue PCB at all. Okay, so those are looking pretty good. We'll do the same for this guy. Yep. Ooh. Now this is the one that we need to take a bit of care on. Ah, uh, right. So those two I do not trust right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove that solder. And get the bottom of my solder sucker. Yes. So you can see this one actually was okay, but this one wasn't. So the solder just floated on top. So I guess if you fit this kit, there's probably people who have had issues with it, and that's probably what their issues were. Now, there's probably another solution to this. I'm going to just experiment here. And if this works, this is the way I want you to fit yours. So I'm just removing the mod. Should be pretty close. So removing it. Trying not to break it. at that it's actually pretty well on here we go so the mod is removed and I'm gonna just clean up that pad so we know that we want to connect to this pad here this pad here so what I'm doing you see I'm pre tinning them because you saw how easy these other points were because they're already good to go. Okay. So we're going to try that one, one other go. This will probably be the last time we'll need to do this. Right. So now you can see exactly what we're trying to get to adhere. So I'm first going to just try without putting any additional solder. And you could see that one took right away. So that with that one pad, you can see it took right away. So that does eliminate a lot of the worry. So I'm just going to apply solder to the other thing. Yeah, it's not a bad design, really. They probably should have used a thinner board, though. You could you can get thinner PCBs. You can see we have a really high-tech setup here. I've got the GameCube more or less assembled and I can power that on. I've got a uh, GameCube controller just off screen. You can keep that there, that's fine. So you can see it loads up, does its usual thing. So if I push up, that's the disk menu. I need to hold down these two contacts here. So the unit thinks that the 
drive lid is shut. We're going to let it whir away. Hopefully it will read the disc, which means everything's okay, so we haven't broken anything. And I believe that has seen the game, which is some sort of horse simulator. Let's have a look. Yeah, so that's fine. Now, when I go to put in... Uh, I've tried a, a UK title. It didn't do anything. And this is the disc that has the Swiss. In fact, we need to reset the GameCube. Now, I don't read Japanese, but I'm pretty sure you can see it doesn't... Um, it's not happy with that. No disc. So what we're going to do is turn that off, push this aside briefly, and see if we can see anything about that laser adjustment. Okay, I've got my complicated rig of boxes here. So you're going to be doing pretty much the similar thing. In fact, let's just take the power off. Although we know all the power is controlled by that one switch, it's best not mess with it. So we just popped our drive off. So at least that's easy now because that's a totally separate thing. So we're going to have a look to see where we probe for this. And we're going to need a multimeter. Now if you don't have a multimeter, you might be able to play along at home, but be very cautious because you don't want to blow out your laser. So that is... I'm pretty sure that's the adjustment part. Now we've got our multimeter here. So we're going to try to measure... I'm eyeballing this. We have... Um, so that's our total resistance if I measure these two. So it looks like... It looks like a 620 ohm variable resistor. So I'm going to measure from the top leg here. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit more. And I'll just read off the numbers, don't worry. I'll just read off the numbers. So we're going from the top leg here to the which I assume is the adjustable part. I'm seeing 0.1 ohms. And then I'm seeing 0.624. So maybe, maybe these are pretty much just connected together. Hmm. So the adjustment is going to be between here and here. So I'm going to now read that off again with a bit more care. So in fact, it's the same as doing that, probably. Should be. 0.625 kilo ohms, so 625 ohms. So then what I suggest you do, I'm just going to get a little piece of paper here. So you have this here. And we're going to write 620 ohms. Now, I've seen figures touted around 200 which sounds, to be honest, a little bit um, high. I mean, if you think about it, you are giving it a significant boost if you're turning it from 600 down to 2. But let's see the direction we're going to need to take. So if that's that way, let's get this. I'm just going to find a tool that will adjust that. Yep, so that look, I've already adjusted it by accident. Um, and that's now 609. So turning it to the left seems to be turning it up. So let's go for something around the 500 mark. Oh, that's 300 ohms. Wow, that was not much of a turn. I'll, I'll zoom in and we'll work out what this looks like to you guys. I'm going to see if I can bring it back to where I was. Okay, so you can see... We're nearly there. Let's let's just give that a kiss more. That's a sensitive adjustment. Right, so um, that's 660. So we're above where we were, but close enough. So I'm going to tell you how much I, I turn it. So if, if, if this is now completely at 12 o'clock, so you can imagine that point there at the top is at 12 o'clock. I'm reading around 600 ohm. Uh, yeah, 600 ohms. I'm going to turn it through 90 degrees. So that's precisely 90 degrees uh, anti-clockwise. 
and that's taken it to 143 ohms. So you don't want to be anywhere near that. It's a really sensitive uh, adjustment. So I've adjusted it back as if we've just turned it 45 degrees rather than that. And now that's at 332, so it's pretty much half, half the power. Um, I'm just going to tweak it a tiny bit more. And now we're at 383. Uh, let's just try it, shall we? We've got nothing to lose at this point, apart from maybe blowing up a laser, which we definitely don't want to do. Um, so yeah, you'll have to do your own research onto what people recommend. It's all a bit hearsay, uh, to be fair. Um, there might be a better instructions somewhere on the internet, or s some instructions on the internet. Just do your research. But I'll tell you, you know, we'll do the test now and I'll tell you what we, we achieved or not. So that's our disc put back in. Let's put our monitor back. Boom. Turn it on. Okay, so. Getting worried there. I was holding that and it didn't spin the disc. Uh oh. Off camera, I did some more fettling. I needed to get the TV away. This was all a bit too, mm, you know, dodgy. Um, I've adjusted it down to 283 ohms. That's where I got to with it. And when that happened, I discovered... Um, just make sure when you're running it like this that all of your connections are sound and you're not pulling out boards or shorting anything out. That's why you don't do it like this to a camera like this. Now, you can see here the menu says Swiss for GameCube and I'm gonna click A for yay. Press start, go. Device selection. Now, I actually have plugged for fun in that SD adapter into the bottom. So that's great. And uh, let's see what the options. Uh, supported file systems, DVD, ISO, multi system backup. Look, there's all sorts of stuff, but we're just going to go straight for the SD for now. Um, did that go away? What do I push? Start. It does seem to just keep jumping up to the old DVD option, but you can see it's a bit tenuous because I've got my finger have to be set on here, but it is running. I'm confident enough now at this point that once you put this into your GameCube, you can then experiment more. It's clearly booting off the CD and now come on, how do we do this? See what happens there, I'm pushing A and it's going straight to the uh, next menu. And in fact the SD is just not even an option anymore, so yeah, we'll have to figure that one out. Wow, look at all these things. Right. That, <laughs> I think that is as they say is that. Let's uh, save, let's park this here and then we'll move on to the next uh, video where we'll just chuck it in the case and just literally get it working because this is not the way to test it. But if you are doing it yourself, again, please be careful with those laser adjustments and turn it anti-clockwise very slowly, like an eighth of a turn, try it, eighth of a turn, try it, eighth of a turn, and I think you'll get there. If you've gonna measure it, look, you've got 620 ohms here, and uh, yeah, say so I've got it at 283. I reckon uh, maybe 300 would probably be working as well. You can play with that a little bit. It does seem to be uh, good enough at this point to put it all back into the case. Please stay tuned for the next part of this series, hopefully the final part. I uh, hope it's been of some use to you and uh, thank you for watching.